Hey guys, Josh here today, and uh, I've been playing a lot of Star Wars Legion, and I thought I would show you how to paint a snowtrooper so that they look like a galactic marine. I've received a lot of positive feedback on these guys, and uh, so I decided to to make a tutorial video for you. I've painted all of my Galactic Marines except for this one here. Uh, you know, the, the whole point was really just to get them started so I could really show you how to do it. But um, to prime this guy, I used Krylon Color Master White. Uh, my favorite primer is the Citadel White Primer, but it's so expensive and quite frankly you can get a similar result from the Krylon products as long as the weather permits so make sure you do it on a nice uh, hot dry day the texture here on my base you can see it's I don't well, I don't know how well you can see it but it is textured uh, Citadel makes a line of texture paints but I typically don't like them because they're very expensive. They do come out nice, but instead, you can get a bottle of this stuff. It's about 10 bucks, and I've painted well over 250 miniatures, and I've been able to get away with about a bottle and a half. So it lasts you a long time. Uh, the only difference is the texture gel is white, and you're not going, it, it's not pre-painted, I guess is all I'm trying to say. The Citadel, Citadel stuff is, is pre-painted. And as you can see, I've spread it around on the, on the base here. Also, I don't glue my models together until the very last moment. Uh, I got this separated here. The arms are harder to get apart. do come apart and I don't recommend gluing these together until you're finished because it makes them a lot easier to paint. So I've pieced my model back together after pulling it apart for you uh, and we're going to go over what colors I used for the base coat. Uh, on the red armor pieces I used Mephiston red. This is uh, just a bright red and that's the same colors the armor on the Galactic Marines and all the pictures that I see. Uh, the red for the cape, however, I used a different color red. I used a corn red. It's more of a maroon. Um, and really, one of the tips when I paint, or when I tell people how to paint, uh, is just make sure you paint different colors for different textures. So that way they they stand out as cloth or as Mandalorian armor in this case. Uh, if you can get a good base coat, you don't have to go with uh, this color here. You can just use the white primer, uh, but this is Celestra Gray. And really it's just an off white. Um, it almost looks like a primer color. Uh, Abaddon Black, uh, I use that for the laser pistol and the holster. Uh, as well as his main weapon. The next color is Mechanicus Standard Gray. Uh, it, it's a nice like canvas gray color. So that's what I was going for. Uh, and then finally I used Mornfang Brown for the pistol holster because quite frankly it just kind of looked like a leather piece to me. I know it's a different color in most of the movies but I really like the look of it when we paint it in leather if you can see the other one there. You don't have to paint them on too uh, carefully. We've got some liquid talent here, which is what I call shade. Uh, and that should cover up any imperfections. Uh, and, and you'll see that in just a moment. But, you know, don't worry too much about, you know, getting the paint on there. Just make sure it's a thin coat so it doesn't build up too much and that you can still see all the little details in the model. So I've pulled the model apart to do the shade. I am going to use Nullin Oil, which is right here. 
this stuff's expensive, make sure you close the cap every time you use it or have it in a secure location so you don't spill it. Um, and every time you use it, shake it up. If you do not own it, uh, you can get it at your local comic book store, your local friendly gaming store, uh, and make sure you don't buy the gloss version. You do not want the gloss. There's two versions, and sometimes they're on the shelf together, and it's really annoying. So the other thing is, if you get a new uh, bottle of it, make sure you shake it up. You know, get a good amount on your brush. I can't, can't really see the brush that well, but... Uh, you're really going to be mopping this around the model. The whole purpose here is to um, mop this color around so it kind of flows into the crevices of uh, your model. And you're going to see a huge difference in the, uh, they're almost like belts wrapped around his boot. Well, the other, the other pro tip here is don't let this stuff pool in one area or you'll end up with a, uh, a big fat drip somewhere you don't want it. Applying it liberally. To all the areas on the model. It's all the same color. A little too much there. If there's too much in one area, you can take your brush and just kind of touch it, and uh, you'll mop it up. But you really want a decent amount on all areas of the model because you're going to bring this up a layer. The next thing I like to do is paint the inside of the cloak. This is the final layer of paint we're going to put on the inside of the cloak because quite frankly nobody's going to pay attention to it and it's not worth spending a lot of time on. So just, yep, just put it on there. And then once you're done with the inside we can put this on top of the model and start working on the rest. Every once in a while, don't forget to wring out your brush. And make sure you let it pool up in his eyes. Cause that's really what's gonna make his eyes nice and dark and bring attention to the fact that they are eyes. There we have it. We're starting to see he already looks really good but we aren't even close to done. We're gonna give this a minute to dry, uh, and then we'll stick on the arms, and we'll do them. I was uh, highlighting the gray on the pants to resemble sort of a, a khaki uh, canvas material. So I'm using Storm Vermin Fur. It's a layer paint by Citadel. Uh, to, to bring out the um, color in these khaki pants. I'm just going over all of the raised details and leaving all the recessed dark areas uh, black. This is another part of the process where having your model unassembled is pretty useful. But, uh, you know, just touch the folds with your brush. And I'm not really going to bother with the underside of the pants, seeing as how you will never see it. I want the hands, the gloves to be black, so I'm going to leave those alone with the gun. I don't even really highlight them. I find that I don't really notice them that much, so I'm going to leave them alone. I actually leave the gun for last because it's mostly just black with silver highlights, but you can do whatever you want to it. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is Octolian Gray. I'm going to highlight all these folds. You don't really have to worry too much about the ones on the back because, uh, quite frankly, they're going to be taken care of. When you put the cloak over it, you're never even going to see them. 
I do paint the bottoms of the shoe white, even though they're going to get dirty later. All right, great. So there we go. We have our boots, and you'll see that when we put this thing on here, it's going to cover up all the parts that we don't want people to see anyway. All right, so now we're going to do all the white on the armor and on the backpack. You don't have to paint the inside of the chest plate. Just touch the, uh, that little, I don't know, it's like little buttons. Just put, touch it. One little touch per button. And it'll really bring out those, those details. And there we go. We have all the white done. This model is looking really good. I'm going to use Scrag Brown to brighten up the leather, just a tad. You could stop here and you'll have a really nice looking model and then move right to the basing. Or you continue along and I'm going to add a bunch of highlights to this thing and bring it up to the next level. Alright, so now we're moving on to highlights. I'm going to start with the clothing. And for this, I'm going to use, um, a, it's called Dawnstone. And what you want to do is you want to get your paint, you know, nice and thin. Not, not runny, though. Just, you know, so you don't have a big glob on, on your brush. Uh, and then at the very edge of the... Uh, I don't know, usually I like to do it at the edge where the um, the color that we just painted meets the wash. And just add a little stripe on each fold. And it's really just going to put a whole nother, I don't know, dimension. It's like a whole nother dimension to the, it adds like a 3D effect. Really, you're just painting little, little stripes on the raised edges, and it's just going to bring out that extra detail in the folds of the clothing. Yeah, you can kind of see the difference. There's that leg on the, uh, his right leg between his right and his left leg. You can see the highlight difference. And it actually makes a pretty big impact. And the next thing we're going to do is highlight the cape, so that way... We get a nice cool cloth look, make it look more like cloth than it already does. For that, I'm going to use Tusker Fur. Again, just like the pants, I'm actually going to create little highlights along the, um, the part where the wash collects in the recesses. So let's do that. And maybe a little bit above too. Nice, long flowing lines. All right, now that we did that on the cape, we're going to go back to Athulian Gray, and I'm going to add the line along the bottom of the cape, all along the edges. There are some mold lines in there that are kind of annoying. Just paint over them until they disappear, until you get to the bottom. So we get that nice line in there. Now we're going to do the cape here. You don't really have to worry about the bottom so much as you have to worry about the edges because most of the time you're looking at this thing from, you're looking down on it. We want this to be more of a solid white so you don't want to mix your paint with water as much as you normally would when doing a layer you want more pigment and you definitely don't want this flowing because it's a stripe. I'm just going to run along the bottom and when we get to the recessed areas we're going to stop because the shadow, I don't know, it'll just make it look more flowy, the keep. Just make sure that every time you do a brush stroke you do one full stroke that way like you don't run into a situation where the line is uneven at at points, it always looks like it's all together. And we have a nice 
straight white line all the way around. Looks really clean. Looks like Santa Claus. <laughs> he does. He looks like Santa. He's coming to deliver some gifts to the rebels. <laughs> uh, now, let's move to the white scratches that Star Wars armor seems to always have. I'm going to pull off the arms for this because it's way easier to get at the chest when the model is disassembled. We're going to focus on the hard edges and just make little scratches on all the hard edges of the armor. Just make little lines. And you don't want to come to you almost don't want to bring them together because then you can make diagonal lines across with these nice little marks like that on the model. We'll bring it down about halfway. Bring this one down a quarter of the way. Just like that. And we'll put two hash marks on there, little scratches. And we'll put some scratches over here. This takes a little bit of practice figuring out what looks good and what doesn't. Worst case scenario, just put some fist and red on there and and repaint it. Just make sure you're doing thin coats so you don't have to worry. Uh, the most noticeable area is going to be the very center of the chest plate where they've got this large flat surface. I always like to put some big scratches right across the center. This part's tedious and you're going to find that your white paint's going to dry and it's going to get chalky. Don't get, don't get antsy or you're going to run into a situation where your paint's going to run and these scratches are not going to look good. You kind of want just a small amount of paint on the tip of your brush and you just want to scratch the same spot until it looks solid and it's a nice little thin line. I'll put another scratch there. And that is how I do the white highlights. Next color is Tau Light Ochre. Looks really bright. We're going to use this on the leather and it's going to make it look old and cracked. And very similar to the way that we did those little white highlights, we're going to do the same thing to the leather gun holster that we have on here. And I know Stormtrooper holsters aren't typically leather, but I like mine to be. So we're going to go on each edge. Just... Well, I missed a little part of that edge, but it looks better that way, so I'm going to leave it. Sometimes you do things and they just work out. It's like Bob Ross. Happy little accidents. Yeah, happy little accidents. Alright, cool. Just like you. And then... To give that effect of cracked leather, you just do little thin lines here and there on the edges of the leather. That's how I like to do it. I'm sure there are other ways, but this is easy and it looks good. I'm just going to take my fist in red and just go over the buttons. Now I got to clean up the gun with black because I've been touching it so much that the paint's rubbing off and then we're going to hit it with uh, a little bit of silver highlights and we'll be done with the model after I'm done with that we can start adding things like mud and other weathering effects so I'm going to end up painting the whole base dryad bark color is the plan for my army and this will help you you don't have to add mud on yours obviously but my um, army's lore 
is that they are abandoned on Kashyyyk. So there's Kashyyyk is like kind of a swampy forest. Isn't that right? At least it was in the video game, The Forest Unleash. So I really want like a dark muddy color for the ground and then have their capes be covered and, and their shoes covered. So don't worry about getting this stuff on your shoes, on the boots of your, your dudes. Just slop it on there because this is a sloppy planet. That's not what we're going for. All right, so now with the boots, we're gonna ruin our nice paint job by adding blots of brown paint to the boots. It's nice and watered down. But these guys have been trudging through mud. And they have mud on their boots. So there we go. We put a little too much on the knee pad on top. That's alright. It'll be okay. Just wipe it off with your thumb. It'll just look dirty. All right, looking dirty, but you can still see some detail through because the paint's real watery. All right, the next part is the cape. This is a long cape, so it's been dragging through the mud, kicking on his boots. We're gonna put some mud all over his cape. It's gonna cover up most of the white, but not all of it. You're gonna touch it with your thumb, mess it up a little bit. You feel like you're doing ruining your paint job, but it'll end up looking really good. Then I'm gonna add a Let's go with a Nullen oil wash on the base before we start dry brushing green for vegetation. Shake up the Nullen oil and go crazy. Just put it all over the place. We're mopping the floor. Wash is dried and now I have some Warpstone Glow is the green color I'm using. And I'm just dry brushing this on to the base to give it kind of a forest floor look. The green is done. I'll probably add a little bit more to get rid of some of these white caps here. But um, other than that, I just have to do the edges of the base and then maybe add some, I'll add some grass. So, yep. All right, I'm, uh, next color I'm using is Steel Legion Drab. Uh, I, I'm going to paint that around the edge of each base. All of my bases are painted in Steel Legion Drab. It makes the army, army uniform. You can do whatever color you want. This is just what I'm doing. Got it all painted up here. Um, just going to add some grass. We got two little tufts of grass. I'm going to break out some super glue. Put that on there, and then press it down. And we got a nice little grass tuft. And then after this, we'll glue the whole model together, and then use some Krylon clear coat, Color Master flat crystal clear, to seal the model so that way when you're playing with it, you do not rub the paint off. So here it is. This is the final moment where our painted Imperial Marine joins the rest of his Imperial brethren to complete the full set of two Imperial Stormtroopers. Will they adopt him into their clan? 
Oh, oh, he stopped. He stopped. His brothers are checking him out. I think it's a success. We've done it, folks. They have adopted him into their clan. <laughs> Except for his weapon. Except for his weapon, because we will never use that in competitive play. <laughs> I, so anyway, that is how I paint my um, uh, my my I'm gonna galactic marines, uh, including the adoption process. Uh, very important. But um, again, quick look. Uh, you know these guys are really similar. So you know that is exactly how I paint these. Um, and just about all of them are painted the same way. Uh, the ion gun is vi very, very similar to all of the, uh, the blaster rifles. Uh, the only one that's unique is the flamer, which is the most important model. Uh, <laughs> and I didn't show you how to paint that one, but I can go over it really quick. Uh, the only real difference is I take uh, just a corn red. Uh, I well I I brush this with black, the tip of the uh, flame cannon, and then I take uh, corn red and I do a little dry brushing with corn red over the uh, the whole end of the barrel, and then I take a, a series of brighter orange colors and you know apply them but less and less until on the very edge I get the brightest of all the oranges and you know that way it looks like nice hot metal um, this tube running from the backpack here to the gun all that is is a um, it's a lead belcher metal uh, and then I just apply a heavy heavy null and oil wash so that way you see all the links real clear and then I dry brush uh, silver over all the links so that way they are just pronounced um, but yeah that that's the only real difference between the flamer unit and uh, everybody else uh, so that's my video thanks for watching <laughs>